Hello everybody, it's the Cinemat Haven here today, and we're gonna be taking a look at the TNH TVZ51, the Czechoslovakian Tier 9. Now, this tank, I, I can definitely say out of all three of them, the Tier 9, I'm really enjoying it. There's a couple of problems, for instance, the side cheeks on the left and right side, whenever you're side scraping, are weak spots, especially it suffers from the same problems as the tier 8. The under armor above the tracks is not exactly the thickest. So other than that, let's go ahead and dive into some of the statistics here and uh, just go, go. We're just going to wing it and go with it. So starting off 252, um, you basically get the premium round as your standard pin for the uh, tier 9, which is really nice, along with that 294 APCR penetration. And 68 millimeters of penetration on the high explosives, along with 440 alpha for both standard and premium, and 530 damage for your high explosives if you can get them penetration. If you can get them to penetrate, along with that, your standard rounds travel at 960 meters a second. Your premium rounds travel at 1,080 meters a second, and your high explosives travel at 860. So the high explosives, if you do plan on loading those, keep in mind they are a little bit slower than the standard shell, so give it a little bit more lead. Um, along with that, 1,900 hit points to be fully upgraded. If we go ahead and drop the turret, 1,880, 20 hit point increase for having the upgraded turret. Still concealment of um, 0.12. Uh, as I've mentioned in the past, this is a little bit above average, but 0.12 is actually a lot higher than above average. Because average on most heavy tanks is like 0.1 to uh, 0.9 to 0.8. Well, 0 0.08, 0 0.09. Uh, view range at 380. It, it's okay. I do recommend optics and situational awareness for this. Just because without it, you're going to feel like you're lacking in the view range department. And, you know, we, we don't ever want to feel like that. We always want to make sure that we're able to spot out our targets and do what we can to make sure that we keep them lit up as long as possible. Uh, max speed of 50. Um, sadly, this tank does not have the same power to weight as the tier 8 at 15 plus. This one only has 14.37. Unless you're running the single shot, then you end up at 14.4. And I can't help but giggle. Okay, so there's shots per clip. It's now there. And now it disappeared just a second ago. Here we go. Select it. And then it pops up again. All right. Nice to see that they actually have it added on this tank that shots per clip actually pop up depending on the gun that you have. Or it might have been an update to the website that they did just a little bit ago. Stock gun, on the other hand, yeah, it's literally just the gun from the tier 8. Uh, is it a single or double? Ah, it's a single. Sad face. That would have been awesome if it was the double. Um, I actually kind of want to try out the stock gun in the tier 9 to see what the reload's like. But I'll do that later, not right now. Starting off, tank's actually not too bad. 13.47 power to weight with the unupgraded engine. Tracks. All right. Sorry. I'm just taking a look at a couple of things. What's up with terrain resistance? No difference. You might actually be better off running with the um, stock tracks since the terrain resistance is not uh, affected for better power to weight. That is something I did not realize. Awesome. And always have the upgraded radio. Okay. Sorry. I'm getting distracted here. I didn't realize that the tracks had no difference in terrain resistance. That's really nice to see. Off-road driving on this thing with that um, just a little bit less in your traverse speed would be totally fine. Okay. We're going to go ahead and jump into this. With the uh, double shot, 27 second reload. You can get this down to an 18 second reload to a 19 second reload. Maybe 21 seconds. I can't remember off the top of my head. But you can get it down to about 20 seconds overall with your 2.5 uh, interclip reload, which really being able to double shot and get that 880 damage out really fast is definitely devastating. Uh, the single shot, you know, you get down to maybe an eight second, nine second reload with a 12 second base reload, probably about a 9.6 second reload, but it honestly amazing 0.4 accuracy. That's pretty bad. Uh, depression, seven degrees, elevation, 19 degrees, Ammo capacity, 40 rounds. Same thing about this tank. I have not yet run into a problem where ammunition is a limiting factor. 40 rounds with a 9 second reload is totally fine, especially with 440 alpha. Now, single shot, 12 second base reload. You do get increased rate of fire because you are using the single shot. So 5 rounds a minute rather than 4.07. Along with that, accuracy gets better by 0.04. Aim time stays at 2.5. And the name time with the uh, double shot 2.7. All right. 
that's actually an SSC. Um, I should be looking over this before I ever play a tank. Along with that, the turret on this tank, um, out of all of them, I think the tier 9 handles the best inside all the matchmaking, all the queues. Just because for me, I find the tier 9 to be capable of just a little bit more than the tier 10. Except for the fact that you had the side weak spots and the under armor, which then again... All of the Czechoslovakian tanks suffered from this, except for the tier 8 premium, the Skoda T56. So turret traverse 25 degrees per second, view range 380, but armor 300, 150, and then 80 millimeters on the rear. So high explosives, you're going to be a little bit defended against those. You know, just that standard little quality of life improvements on the tank itself. It does have a weird shaped turret as well. Engine power 750, power to weight with the dual shot is 14.37. With the single shot, 14.4. Top speed of 15, reverse speed of 15, fire chance at 15% as well. So, reverse speed, forward speed, power to weight. I find this tank to be really mobile. Even though you don't have that 15.6 power to weight like the tier 8 does, it still feels like you're able to get in the position extremely fast and lock it down quickly. But then again, it's not all about speed. It never will be all about speed. People who think it's all about speed, I'm sorry to say, you're wrong. Um, if a super heavy gets locked down correctly, it's going to be all about who's knowing how to play their armor a little bit better more than it is about how fast you get into a position. So with people talking about the meta currently saying that it's changing, um, the only thing that's really changing the meta is the fact that they are removing maps from high tier matchmaking. For instance, tier eight used to see port, mines, mountain pass. Mountain pass was lowered all the way down to uh, tier four, tier six, I believe. And even playing tier six, I do not see it at all. I've been playing a little bit of tier six and just haven't seen it once in the past two weeks. Honestly, rather than removing maps, they should just leave them the way that they are because taking them out is, in my opinion, not a good idea. They should leave them the way that they are because there's it, it's just it's limiting a lot a lot of things all right jumping over to the tracks we're looking at 30 degrees per second terrain resistance of 1.1 1.2 2.3 and as i said just a second ago i actually think you'd be better off with the stock tracks for that better power to weight output if you're looking to get speed and move quickly but unless you want that additional two degrees of traverse speed just to upgrade them i guess but honestly looking at the stock tracks i might be running the stock tracks seeing that the power to weight gets quite a decent jump by a quarter of a uh, power to weight. So that's going to be pretty nice. And then uh, signal range at 800 meters. It's going to be really good for assist damage, so being able to pull over and do whatever you really need to do. So talking about it, this is versing itself with AP rounds, 252 standard. And uh, as it comes up, there's a problem right there. You can overmatch the entire lower part of the armor. It's only 30 millimeters with 20 millimeters of space protection. And whatever you do, don't believe the absorb that you see on this because that is a lie. Console has something way different for their um, how spaced armor calculates a shell going through. And it'll just pass through it and hit it directly. It, there is no spaced armor protection there whatsoever. Um, along with that top plate, we're looking at 130, bottom plate 115. You can definitely pull around and bait shots on the side. And even against heat rounds, extreme angles like this, there will be no penetration at all. Now, turret armor on this tank is not too bad. You do have a couple of weak spots up here that kind of flatten out a tad bit once you load the premium rounds. A little bit of flat spots on both sides. And then the inside of the turret's at 300 millimeters. And this is why I'm saying this tank feels so comfortable because you have these 50 millimeter spaced armor additions on the sides here that just help you absorb heat along with that you do have a little bit of an opening for a viewport that does pop out right over here gun mantle feels good and a tiny little hatch so if you really want to get in there and just play aggressive as you can you are able to do that without much of a problem and even the sides of the hatch where people like to aim because it's a lot more easier to see and a bigger area to target it's still extremely difficult to pin because you got 300 millimeters there coming out further. But if you're aiming directly on, this is a lot thicker because this is against APCR. So we'll use high explosives and look at the armor there. So 344 millimeters, 400, 500. Yeah, this is not going to be penetrated easily at all. A high explosive, by the way, they work the same way as a heat round does. So we can kind of use those to give an idea for like how um, heat rounds would work in that area. Top armor though, we're looking at two, well, 130. Maxing out your gun depression is going to make this tank extremely difficult to pin because you do enter that auto ricochet 
right on the upper part of the hull if you're using all 7 degrees of your max gun depression. Uh, even the lower armor at 297 against AP, against high explosives, we're looking at about 364. So, yeah, standard heat rounds that have 340 pin will not be able to penetrate that. Lower plate, though, be careful over extending a tad bit, and if you come in at a slight angle, high explosives will have no issues pinning your um, side cheeks on this tank, which is a little bit of the downfall, so make sure if you're coming over a hill, you give it a slight angle, nothing too much, and slowly approach up the top and take it slow. These tanks are definitely highly aggressive. Now, taking a look at the top armor here, let's go ahead and do a visual. Top armor in the back, we got 30 millimeters. Artillery's gonna feel so good. Back of the turret, we got 80 millimeters, plus it's on an extreme angle, lower part of the turret, 80. Rear armor, we're looking at 80 millimeters as well. So you can essentially bait with your butt, but don't do it. It's just fun to be able to say that. Back of the turret, we're looking at 40 millimeters, so be able to bounce 120s off the back of that turret, and whenever you're using all your gun depression, it's gonna be very hard to see that. Also, one thing I didn't mention about the tier eight, is that on top of these turrets, they have 52 millimeters of armor. 40 millimeters going up a little bit further. There's your 52 right there. And if we go live and give this a nice little angle, there we go. We got the 52. That's going to be able to bounce a 155 millimeter. And then the back here, 40 millimeters will be able to bounce a 120, but not 122s or bigger. Top of the hatches, we're looking at 40 millimeters. Top of this hatch, we're looking at 40. 90 on some spots, 110. Honestly, the top of the turret is pretty nice whenever it comes down to overextending a tad bit, but you do have this top armor on the side of the cheeks that you do got to worry about because of the uh, design. Overall, though, your under armor, 30 millimeters. We already know that pulling over and exposing under armor, unless it's the 279E, um, usually has a lot of problems just because not enough armor underneath the tank to be able to actually block a shell. So other than that, let's go ahead and start diving into some replays. Um, first map, we're going to be looking at Red Shrier. This was actually played right before um, I started recording. I was looking to get a better single shot match because the match I currently had was only in the range of, let's say, like, possibly 3,200 damage with nothing ricocheted. So I was all like, yeah, I'm going to play a little bit and try and get my hands on a better match to be able to show it off appropriately. Now, with these tanks, I can definitely say that they are powerhouses. The double shot capability, the single shot capability. Um, I prefer to run the double shot on the tier 9, but every once in a while I find myself loading the single shot. Um, standard penetration at 252 is not bad at all. I do not find myself relying on premium a whole lot, unless I'm ending up in those really close quarter situation where we want to guarantee penetrations each time that we pull around the corner. And as everyone knows, whenever you spot or see artillery, kill it with fire. <laughs> kill it with fire. <laughs> Immediately, my reaction to this is like, <laughs> oh, artillery, kill it with fire. <laughs> and then there's blade. Um, so right here, I pulled up a little bit too far. I didn't realize how um, the spawn locations that they were going to be here this quick. We're going to want to go ahead and pull off. So knowing that these tanks do suffer with the under armor, being right here is a really bad idea, so we want to actually back off and get somewhere where we can actually use our turret armor and our upper hull. Uh, with the top armor of the tank as well, it it's it definitely feels really good. The tier 9 to me stands out a lot more than the tier 10 and the tier 8. But the tier 8, you know, whenever it comes down to it, if that tier 8 did not have a hatch and it had maybe 45 millimeters of under armor right above the tracks, um, in my opinion, I could actually officially label that tier 8 as being the best tier 8 in the game overall. Just because of how it's put together and how it feels. Right here, you know, that 7 degrees of limiting gun depression, you want to get a little bit further off the hill to be able to take your shots. There we go, AMX 65 ton, putting a shot in him. Up to 1250 damage so far. And, you know, terrain, a little bit of a tip here, terrain... Whenever you're trying to work around terrain, it's always best to go a little bit wider to get that maximum gun depression. You know, you don't want to come out flat where you're aiming sideways the entire time. You always want to try and use the part of the hill to maintain that gun depression. So, 
if you're able to pull out maxing out your gun depression, that's going to be the thickest your armor is going to be, no matter what. Right here, trying to aim for the side panel, but unable to get it. There's no point in firing, so we're just going to hold our shell. But since the VZ did fire, we are going to pull around and get a shot into the uh, 50 TP and back off. Telling Blade back up now. You know, I was telling him to back up, and because I said the VZ's on reload, and he's about to be loaded coming around the corner. And what's really nice is you can actually tell the difference if the VZ is running the single shot or the double shot just specifically by the way the barrel looks. So with the big boy muzzle break on the end of it with what you guys see right now, this is definitely the single shot and inside the next replay we'll be showing off the um, double barrel. So I actually forgot to mention in close quarters combat this tank has actually really surprised me just because of the barrel thickness. So your barrel, it's not exactly the thickest, it's only 60 millimeters thick, but you can use it to absorb a shell if you need to at those close quarters engagements. Right here, putting a shot into the side of the VZ, we need to back off, and there goes Blade by the MX-65 son. There we go, we don't want to waste any shells. Here it is right here. Um, we actually bounced off the side armor, and the shell went straight into the top armor of the side of the tracks right above the top armor there and you know that's going to be kind of the limiting factor of these tanks and these tanks you want to play a little bit aggressive but at mid-range with the power to weight that they have how fast they can move at 50 um honestly though this tier 9 you can drop improved ventilation you're going to want to keep vertical stabilizer without a doubt but you can drop ventilation for power terrain if you really want to uh that is an option if that is something you are looking forward to doing. Me, personally, I'm using ventilation because I like getting that little bit of extra view range, a little bit more of an advantage since we are limited at 380 view range. So that little bit of ventilation does help out quite a bit. Now, right here, I don't really want to fire. I want to hold my shell. I actually wanted to try and get up top, but since he tracked me, um, it's not going to happen now. So we're going to go ahead and just send out a final shell to get a little bit extra damage before the end of the match because it's going to be over because the light tank um you know in situations like this i don't blame anyone the enemy team had a really good lockdown on this side of the map and they really limited our movement so props to the enemy team for taking over and controlling that engagement on that side that was actually a pretty good play um and one of the biggest reasons why I chose this replay to show off is because this shows off the ricochet, shows off the close quarters engagement, the potential output with a single shot, and the second match, since I only have so much time to be able to really go over these tanks, I don't want to, you know, spend a week and a half trying to get the best possible matches that I can get for them to be able to show them off. And it's not like I'm choosing and cherry picking the best matches. I'm taking matches that, you know, potentially show off the armor of the tank, show off the capabilities, what I feel comfortable going up against and holding myself against. And this match right here is kind of just one of those run and gun games where we just took full control over an entire side flank and pushed. But I guess it can show off the output and accuracy of the tank because the armor definitely does stand up very well. And as you guys can see on the very end of this barrel, it's actually smooth. So, with the smooth barrel at the very end, you will be able to know if they have the double shot or not. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, these trees right here, I'm getting in the habit of knocking every single one of these trees down every single time I come through this area. Just because these trees, if you knock them down, you can have a tank destroyer sit behind them, potentially never getting spotted. You kind of want to knock them down a tad bit to the left. That way they kind of go over the street. That way, you know, the tank destroyer sitting in the background has clearance to push across and get across without being spotted. There's also a tree off to the far left that I normally shoot with a high explosive. But because uh, the way that this is put together right now, I would, you know, with the double shot, you can't really load the uh, high explosives. And this match, I am using nothing but premium because I was having a couple of bad experiences and ending up against a lot of 10s and... Well, just kind of got to the point where I was just going to load nothing but premium for a few games and just went with it. Uh, most of the time, though, I don't load full premium, but I kind of wanted to get an idea and feel for how the premium rounds inside this thing feel. And I can tell you now, the 294 standard penetration that they have 
and then with the double shot capability for 880 output, it is devastating. But even with the standard shells, last match showed it off pretty well that you don't need to rely on premium inside these tanks with the 252 standard bin. So, right here, TNH. This is actually perfect demonstration of the turret armor on the TNH. You can go through it with above 279 penetration. Here we are just trying to line up a shell, and he got behind the building. So sadly for me, we're not going to be able to take him down easily. We're going to have to just take some time out. And push farther left. This is also another thing that whenever you don't have a lot of guys take the city and the enemy team has a full hard rush on the left side, what can happen whenever you do not take control over the city. Now, Ferdinand... Um, I've been mentioning this is that uh, there's been a lot of tier 8s with over armor buffs Ferdinand is definitely one of them They bumped it up to 250 millimeters thick which has kind of made that thing very devastating to go up against just because uh, Against most tier 8s. It's gonna be very easy to consistently bounce Especially since we have a lot of tier 8s that have under 260 premium penetration and they will find themselves lacking quite a bit Now, just waiting for us to get unspotted, taking a look at the map. Honestly, looking at these replays, I can say that the maps do look really good, but it does suck that we're limited on the amount of maps that are in the game right now, again. Because beforehand, this was a complaint from the community that, you know, we're seeing the same maps all the time, and now we're kind of on that rinse-repeat cycle once again. I would like to see more maps brought back. And the other maps added back to high tier matchmaking. I don't know why Mountain Pass was removed. If anyone knows why Mountain Pass was removed from high tier matchmaking, it would be nice if you guys could drop it down in the comments. Because personally, I did not see a flaw with that map. I found Mountain Pass to be one of those maps that just felt absolutely amazing to play on. But apparently, I guess, how I felt about that map is not how most of the community felt about that map. Since they took it away and added it back... I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys can agree that people just did not know where to go and did not know how to play that map. So, rather than removing it, they should have left it in and came out with one of their guides that they've been coming out with, which, honestly, looking at a lot of the guides that they have been sharing, um, definitely not the strategies I would play on those maps for my team if I was in control of a 15-man team. Um, if I was in control of a 15-man team, I would actually do a lot of different plays on maps that would essentially lock down and cause a lot of crossfires. So, yeah, I, I guess that the other CCs and their ideas of wanting to put stuff together is okay. There we go, putting a shell down range into the Slapjack and setting him on fire. But this is, you know, like, aggressive plays taking the side path, and the enemy team did not take this city at all. So this is actually kind of just a steamroll. Even with standard rounds, a lot of these would just be shredding and going through without much of a problem. So, yeah, this is just a disgusting replay for how the enemy team played. Because beforehand, they were winning by quite the amount. And after our team got situated on the right side of the map, just full control. There we go, waiting it out, putting a 522 in. And that's what's so nice about 440 Alpha. You can get some really nice high rolls. 522 is definitely... I believe 522 is the highest you can get for the high rolls inside this tank here. And now going in for the aggressive push. Just down the side of the map. Nothing really too much on it. You know, just going to hit it as well as we can. Pushing up T30. There's a ricochet off the T30 as well. Putting a secondary in. Hitting the tracks. Up to 4,747 along the 750 blocked from the T30. Now, these tanks, the tier 9, uh, the cons to it, I've already labeled off a ton of them. Um, accuracy wise, these tanks do feel comfortable with their accuracy. I, I seriously don't feel like you need stabilizers on these. And I'm going to have to give it a couple of runs without stabilizers to see if I'm okay with that. Because if you're going for lockdown gameplay and you're not going to really push a whole lot, yeah, you definitely don't need to use any... Uh, any stabilizers because you're you're always going to be fully aimed in with accuracy under 0.3 depending on how your crew is put together. Um, running one accuracy perk like steady aim is really all you need for these tanks, and 
the tier 10, I did end up inside of a match in it without a crew and took full control over that match. So there is that. Now, top 5,587 damage dealt, 1,501 experience. These tanks, by the way, because of the way that they are and the way that they're performing, um, there have been a lot of people performing extremely well inside these tanks. A third class mastery badge for 1,501 experience, which means to get a mastery badge in this, you need to achieve above 3,000, like you need to get above 2,200 base experience on these tanks. Now, um, I'm using the same crew for all three of these tanks as well. It's actually the American crew that I normally use, which is my heavy crew. So let's go ahead, stop, take a look at the perks, because I forgot to do that in the last video for the TNH 105, because I'm a Muppet, like everyone else. We all make mistakes, and happy to say that I'm making mistakes, because if I wasn't, there'd be a problem. So, Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Six Sense, Situational Awareness, Off-Road Driving, Clutch Braking, Track Mechanic, Steady Aim, and rapid aim to increase that gun traverse speed. Um, I play a lot more responsive inside these tanks, and even with this current setup with only the one accuracy skill perk, uh, we can come over to module viewer. My accuracy is at 0.23 with only one perk running equipment on top of it, which is gun stabilizer. And this is why I've mentioned in the past that you don't need all the accuracy perks to get good accuracy. You can kind of mix match and get perks where you want to have them. That way you're a bit more responsive inside the match and to have a better outcome. So we can go ahead. To, I'm actually going to equip a powertrain on this right now and drop the vertical stabilizers. And this is going to be probably my main build for quite some time. Let's jump back over to the module viewer. 0.28 accuracy, aim time point like 2.26. That's completely fine. Power to weight jumped up to 15.12 with the uh, power terrain equipped as well. So yeah, power terrain is probably going to be the way to go on this tank because the accuracy is still under 0.3. It's in that comfort zone. You got nothing really much to worry about. And with off-road driving, our terrain resistance is um, 0.99. Medium terrain is 0.98. And then soft terrain is 1.69. Nice. Nice. Okay. So, other than that, you guys, um, this line, it feels amazing. There are some flaws to it that I have been taking full advantage of and potentially steamrolling them in actually tiers underneath what they are. So, even up against a tier 10, um, I can be instead of a tier 9 and just steamroll the 10 because I know all the weak spots. That is the advantage of being a content creator, by the way. You learn a lot about weak spots, especially like my type of content creation. How I'm looking at a ton of things about the tank to take full advantage of it, learn how to play it, and then learn how to go against it. Other than that, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know actually in the comments how the audio was between both those replays. They were both set at different decibel counts. Uh, the single shot match was actually the higher decibel count, so it should have been quieter. While the second match was based upon the old system before I implemented my audio counter so other than that you guys have a fantastic day night afternoon whatever it is for you and um, i'm gonna be working on the tier 10 i already have the matches played and ready i just want to get a couple more in to see if i can get some nice ricochet counts decent outputs everything else and talking about the tanks and my videos and everything else that i do i don't like to show off high damage matches over a whole ton the way i look at it is i want to show you matches in positions that you know kind of help you reserve your hit points so with that single shot match you guys noticed that i played a way passively did not risk a whole lot of hit points ended up with 4,000 damage by the end of the match and if that match would have continued to go on that could have been a potential 7,000, 8,000 damage match what you guys need to practice and focus on is learning areas of a map and how to reserve your hit points and ways to maneuver your tank to help you utilize your gun depression, use your armor, think about your under armor, think about your top armor, think about um, enemy tank armor. If a heat round can penetrate a very specific spot on a tank or if an AP round, you can try and go for an overmatch. That's something that you guys should practice on to help you guys improve your gameplay. And I'm going to try and go over that later down the road once I feel a bit more comfortable with what I'm doing. 
So, yeah. You guys have a great night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. I'll catch you guys all later. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. And, yeah, I'm going to go be a slacker. So, that's the goal for me today. You guys have a good one. I'm out of here.